Bom dia a todos. Vamos começar agora o painel 2 do segundo seminário sobre diplomacia, inovação científica e tecnológica. O painel 2 trata da ação internacional no Brasil, de China e União Europeia. Em primeiro lugar, gostaria de agradecer a participação dos dois panelistas, o embaixador da China, Li Xinhang, à minha esquerda, e o representante da União Europeia, Khalil Ruhana, vice-diretor-geral da Direção-Geral para as Redes de Comunicação, Conteúdos e Tecnologias da União Europeia. É um grande prazer tê-los aqui conosco. É, eu creio que, ao invés de termos uma apresentação, é, vamos, vamos começar uma conversa, e essa conversa poderá, então, estender-se também para o auditório, é, ao, ao final, com perguntas também, que os senhores queiram fazer e, com isso, teremos uma interação maior. O nosso objetivo é promover uma interação maior. Eu sou presidente da Fundação Alexandre de Guzmão, um órgão vinculado ao Ministério das Relações Exteriores. Nós estamos ajudando o Ministério da Ciência e Tecnologia e Itamaraty na organização deste evento. E a nossa missão tem a ver com a criação de uma consciência da importância das relações internacionais. Nós publicamos livros né, e organizamos debates. Muitos desses livros têm a ver com inovação né, e também com inovação na China, como é o caso também desse livro aqui, Brasil, China e 40 anos de relações diplomáticas, né, que também tem uma, um capítulo. E esses livros, e também um outro, também sobre a União Europeia, os nossos livros, o acesso é gratuito. E os senhores poderão, então, é, fazer o download é, das publicações. É, vou começar, então, com o embaixador da República Popular da China, o embaixador Li Xinhang. É, embaixador, é, a China é reconhecidamente um país que prioriza a agenda é, de ciência, tecnologia e inovação. É, e muito do, do crescimento chinês se deve exatamente a essa prioridade que a China dá à é, ciência, tecnologia e inovação. Como o senhor avalia o papel do Ministério dos Negócios Estrangeiros Chinês na internacionalização dos ecossistemas de ciência, tecnologia e inovação? E de que maneira é tratado na China o conceito de diplomacia da inovação? É, como 发展我们是科技为第一生产力在当前呢我们把科技创新呢作为经济发展的主要的推动力没有不久前呢我们国家中国共产党召开了十九大制定了新时代中国特色社会主义的行动纲领发展的蓝图这个对今后中国科技包括创新的发展做出了新的规划这个同时呢我们也高度重视啊这个科技外交的工作这个我们已经和一百五十个国家地区和组织建立了科技合作的关系签订了一百一十一个政府间的科技合作的协定加入了二百多个政府间的国际科技合作组织而且呢我们向全世界七十一个驻外的外交代表机构都派出了科技外交官一共差不多一百五十人我们也积极地推动了国际科技合作牵头参与了听力这个国际大科学计划
解决科技发展和产业技术发展中的瓶颈问题，为经济发展呢注入新的动能，共同的应对啊，呃，全球性的挑战。在国内呢，我们政府机构中主要是外交部和科技部，啊，呃为首的一些部门呢，一直密切的合作。我们共同编制了《推进“一带一路”建设科技创新合作专业规划”，《加强“一带一路”框架内的国际科技合作”等等等等。中国呢，还与美国、欧洲、巴西等世界主要国家和地区啊，开启了八大创新对话机制，与这个非洲、东盟、拉美国家等广大发展国家建立了六大科技合作呃伙伴计划，基本实现了对世界呃所有的发展中国家的全覆盖。通过这个框架呢，来这个推动，加强了政策协调和全球创新。Muito obrigado, embaixador. E, e quais seriam, na, na sua visão, as principais virtudes e os principais desafios da experiência é, dos startups na China, é, inclusive em vista das recentes fusões e aquisições importantes tais como a compra da 99 pela Didi Shuxing, né? de que maneira investidores chineses de capital de risco poderiam incrementar ainda mais a sua presença no mercado brasileiro? Sim, nós temos uma grande parte da nossa economia. 刚才我讲到创新发展的战略，打动创业、万众创新的新浪潮席卷全国。二零一四年以来呢，每天啊新登记的呃企业就有呃一万四千户，也就是中国呢一年就诞生五百万家了新的企业。这主要呢还是得益于中国不断的出台啊支持大众创业、万众创新的政策。培育呢孵化器、加速器、科技园区、产业园区等全链条的创业的生态。当然，中国创业呢也面临一些挑战，包括如何进一步啊完善有利于创新的体制和机制，如何有序的引导风险投资金呢，金融资本进入整个的这个创业研发过程等等。呃，应该说，巴西呢，政府在鼓励啊初创企业发展方面做了很多的工作，比如说科技发起的呃这个 Startup Brazil 的计划，吸引了这个私人企业投入研发。巴西的工业创新研究院主动的构建企业和科研机构中的桥梁。并且与小微企业扶助中心的合作等等，是提振的创业企业创业创新的，呃，值得学习借鉴。如何进一步增加对创业的支持，是包括巴西等啊各国面临的共性的问题。相信呢，随着巴西经济向好，那么初创企业将获得更多的资金扶持支持。那么中国的风投在跨境投资方面也越来越活跃。呃，聚焦的领域呢也越来越多元化。呃，但是呃，风险投资者对行业和技术敏感性强，反应快，啊，善于挖掘，呃，有潜力的这个初创项目。相信呢，只要中巴呢加大创新领域的交流，增进对彼此创新创业项目的了解，找到契合点，就能吸引到啊更多的。有风险投资，呃，目前呢，中国一些风投企业，包括一些科技企业，也呃纷纷的呃来到巴西呢，探讨合作的机会，并且呢，已经啊、呃、取得了、呃、这个这个一定的这个进展，呃，比如
刚才这个大师先生所提到的，这个中国叫滴滴出行啊，收购九九大车啊，我希望他们在巴西啊能够有更好的发展，为更多的企业进入巴西，也为更多的巴西的丰收企业进入中国市场的这个创造经验啊，奠定基础。Uma outra área importante é a área de agricultura de precisão, que é um setor altamente desenvolvido tanto no Brasil quanto na China. Como um projeto bem sucedido de parceria binacional, como o CIBERS, na área de cooperação em matéria de telecomunicações e satélites, poderia servir de inspiração para uma eventual adoção no Brasil da plataforma CropWatch, que combina uso de imagens satelitais, análise de dados e computação na nuvem, no marco dos conceitos de produtividade e segurança alimentar. Enfim, como, é que, como a tecnologia de satélites, como a nossa experiência nessa área pode facilitar a, a produção alimentar, a, a segurança alimentar? Uh, uh, de fato, o desenvolvimento de 中国和巴西之间在高科技领域合作的一个名片、呃典范，就是两国这个地球资源卫星啊上的合作。那么这项合作已经服务于两国农林、水利、啊国土资源和城市规划等各个领域，应该说已经为我们两个国家的经济和社会发展。做出了独特的贡献。那么，在双边领域呢？早在二零零零年，那么开始，那么巴西就利用资源卫星的数据啊，对亚马逊这个雨林呢进行了这个监测管理，有效的控制了啊乱砍滥伐的现象，使得这个。森林再生和森林利用呢，逐步的走上了呃良性循环的发展道路。那么在国际合中合作中呢，从呃零二新开始，两国呢共同宣布将卫星获取的呃二十米分辨率数据免费啊提供给呃世界各国。是数据呢，在多个国家得到了广泛的运用，呃，体现了发展中国家利用航天技术开展国际人道主义援助的负责任形象。那么，相信呢，未来我们两个国家将继续呀、啊，在地球资源卫星合作中呢，走深、走实，而且将更多的科研的这些成果呢。利用于啊农业、环境保护、资源勘察等多个领域，以实在的成果啊，造福于两国人民。Talvez aqueles que não têm familiaridade com alguns desses temas, o crop watch é um modelo bem sucedido de de plataforma georreferenciada que conjuga tecnologia de ponta no tratamento de imagens satelitais. e altíssima escala de abrangência territorial. O China Brazil Earth Resource Satellite, o CBERS, é um projeto de parceria entre o INPE e a sua correspondente, a CAST. O projeto antigo foi iniciado ainda em 1988 para a construção e lançamento de um satélite, e foi relançado em 2002 para a construção de mais três satélites. A pergunta tinha a ver com a questão da integração entre CropWatch e o CBERS.
Terra. Embaixa, embaixador, a região de Cantão concentra 24% de toda a pesquisa e desenvolvimento realizada na China. Quais... Quais possíveis pontos de sinergia o senhor vê entre o cluster de Cantão e os principais ecossistemas de inovação no Brasil? Ah, é, Arling 刚才这个大师先生提到了当然的重新能力的提高探索共建科技园区的可能性É, para aqueles que não acompanham tão de perto, a região de Cantão, no sul da China, ela con concentra quase 5 mil empresas de tecnologia, o que representa 60% do PIB daquela região e gastos anuais em pesquisa e desenvolvimento, 1,6 bilhões. É, os números de Cantão realmente impressionam. São 180 incubadoras, 79 universidades, 141 institutos de ciência e tecnologia e 19 laboratórios nacionais instalados na, na, na região. É, embaixador, é, em 2015 foi assinado memorando de entendimento entre a Amprotec, que é a Associação Nacional de Entidades Promotoras de empreendimentos inovadores pelo lado brasileiro, como o senhor vê possíveis trocas de experiências no tema dos parques tecnológicos ao que o senhor acabou de se referir entre China e Brasil, a partir do mecanismo bilateral? Uh, 已经建立了一系列的科技合作的平台 
呃，中巴呃纳米技术联合实验中心、联合研究中心、中巴生物物质燃烧三维监控联合研究中心、呃，农业科学联合实验室、空间呃天气联合实验室、农业呃这个科学联合实验室。深海呢，技术联合研究院等，啊，这些这个这个机制的建立啊，正在为推进两国在科技呃呃这个范畴内各个领域的合作啊，发挥非常重要的作用。嗯，呃，刚才这个立马大师谈到的就是呃，中国科技部啊，火球中心和巴西国家创业。创新促进协会签署的备忘录。那么，我想，也就是，呃，在建立新的平台的基础上呢，深入啊，开展我们在各领域的合作。嗯，那么，迄今呢，可以说是中巴科技园区啊，合作进展很顺利的。一六年的七月份，这个科技园区论坛呢，在巴西召开。那么刚才谈到的，呃，巴西的创业创新促进会，呃，和火炬中心呢，有意啊，在人员培训、信息交流、政策共享等方面呢，来深入开展合作。那么八方的圣诺泽，呃，杜斯坎普斯，呃，科技园，与中方的中关村科技园、石景山园区呢，于一六年就签署了合作的协议。未来呢，双方可以以此啊作为试点，在互利共赢的基础上呢，通过两国各级政府的给予的政策支持，啊，互派企业在这些园区落地，开展联合研发等啊创新啊创业的活动，这个推动呢合作科技园区和产业园区的这个呃建设。Bem, muito obrigado, embaixador. Eu vou passar agora é, para o, o representante é, da União é, Europeia, é, senhor Kalil Ruhana, vice-diretor-geral do DG Connect, direção geral para as redes de comunicação, conteúdos e tecnologias da União Europeia. É, muito obrigado por sua presença. É, o, senhor, o senhor está ouvindo bem? Está ouvindo bem. Né? É, qual é o papel da DG Connect dentro da estratégia comunitária de construção de parcerias institucionais no marco do programa Horizon 20 mil, é, 2020? Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh... DigiConnect in the, in, in the European Commission is the Director General that uh, is responsible for digital policy. Uh, the, this is one of the ten priority policies of the European Union today. And uh, digital policies aim at uh, one overall goal, make sure that uh, every citizen in Europe, every business in Europe, including new startup companies, SME, mid-size, and large companies, could make the best out of digital technology. Uh, the, uh, uh, that's the overall goal, and for, to achieve that goal, we use all policy instruments available. We use the regulatory uh, measures, so we're responsible for the regulatory framework for electronic communication. We're responsible for a large part of the regulatory framework for data and cloud infrastructure. We're also responsible for the regulatory framework regarding content, audiovisual, content online, and our online transactions. So we do a regulation. Another instrument that we use is financial instrument, and for that, our big investments that are done at EU level are in research, development, and innovation. This is almost 20% of the Horizon 2020 framework program 
that we use to support digital technologies, the development, but also their application across all sectors of the economy and to address our societal challenges. This is around 2 billion euros per year that we spend on research, development and innovation. But we also have other investment means that we use to support the infrastructure development in Europe and also the rollout of technologies and its adaptation in public sector areas, be it for modernization of our public sector and our health, uh, uh, or our uh, uh, mobility, transport, etc. We're also responsible for uh, everything related to security, uh, so cybersecurity policies, uh, including regulation and investments there as well. And we uh, uh, follow and are responsible also for the competitiveness of the digital industries and digitized industries across Europe. So that's the portfolio of DigiConnect. And uh, research, development, and innovation is, uh, as I mentioned, a, a key part. We see it as a key part of our policy development. It's a key instrument to achieve our policy goals that I mentioned. And uh, I think that we talked uh, this morning about science and technology and innovation. Uh, given the acceleration of the innovation cycle, uh, the, the, today we see uh, science and technology as a key part of all policy goals for digital, it's clear, but we also for transport or for uh, health, the, the research, science, technology, and innovation are an integral part of these policies, and this is the way we see them. So that's uh, uh, the role of uh, research innovation and uh, the, the investment that, we, that is done under H2020 in digital and how we see it as part of our digital policies. And uh, uh, this is the, uh, the, the approach that we use also for all our interaction uh, across the world around digital policies, including with Brazil, for example, where our dialogue on digital policies uh, includes our co-investments, our cooperation in research, development, innovation, and digital from the micro and nanoelectronics and components uh, to software, to uh, artificial intelligence, uh, to also the means to protect our citizens, cybersecurity, etc. So research innovation uh, is part of this dialogue and we see it more and more linked to uh, the other aspects of our dialogues that, that are important for us as well. Uh, like uh, alignment of our regulatory frameworks to make sure that companies, uh, uh, both sides, uh, in the EU and Brazil, can share the same rules so they can develop their businesses easier uh, uh, in our two regions. And uh, also to other policies that are important for both of us and for many of our partners around the world regarding the challenges that technology is bringing to policy making uh, regarding uh, citizens' rights, regarding safety, uh, regarding the impact on jobs, on skills, the development of human capital. So all this is one uh, set of uh, areas that policymakers should look at and are looking at and in which research innovation is important. This is the approach that we have for cooperation around the world. And I must say that cooperation with Brazil is one of our best successes so far, uh, be it on research innovation, where we have the most intensive cooperation uh, with our partners around the world in the area of digital, uh, where we systematically, with the ministries here, uh, co-engage and co-invest in uh, common projects, but also on the other aspects uh, of digital policies uh, our cooperation is, is uh, very, very advanced. So uh, that's what we do in DigiConnect. This is the role of research and innovation, and this is research, innovation, and cooperation uh, around the world, how our approach, and in particular with Brazil. In relation to the horizon 2020, que é o Programa Quadro Comunitário de Pesquisa e Inovação, 
com um orçamento global de 77 bilhões de euros né, para o período 2014-2020, é, parece que é o maior instrumento da comunidade europeia orientado para o apoio à pesquisa é, e é, de, de, de que maneira é, 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 o Brasil se insere dentro deste, deste contexto Yes, so Horizon 2020, uh, our uh, framework program for research and development that runs now from 2014 to 2020, 77 billion euros. Uh, the, uh, so close to 11 billion euros per year. Uh, the, that program is uh, one of the largest collaborative programs worldwide. I think it is the largest. Uh, collaborative program where we support collaboration between industry and academia and it goes from uh, support to excellence in science, support to the research development innovation to address our societal challenges from uh, sustainable healthcare to sustainable development to uh, cost efficient mobility and uh, a third pillar of this Horizon 2020 is the support to give to the key technologies that our industries need, so that's uh, uh, devoted to uh, the competitiveness of our industries. Uh, this, these are the three big areas of Horizon 2020. Our main approach for research, development, innovation, including the way we implement our Horizon 2020, is based on the, what we call the three O's principle. It's about openness to a large extent. Openness in terms of open innovation, to encourage the development of uh, new businesses, to encourage uh, new scientific discoveries in an open way, open access, open access to research results that we share with all our partners around the world, inside the EU as well, and the third O is about openness to the world. And it is a program that is open to participation from around the world. I don't think there are other programs so open as H2020 as we see. Uh, uh, open to partners, and we're, we're, we're happy to see that Brazilian uh, participation in this program is significant. Uh, Brazil is uh, fourth or fifth in terms of participation from non-EU countries uh, in, uh, in, in Horizon 2020. Today, uh, uh, I've looked at where we are currently in Horizon 2020. We have more than 350 projects with uh, Brazilian participants. Uh, and we hope that that would continue. Uh, the, uh, the program uh, addresses many fields. If I take the areas that I was mentioning on digital, uh, uh, the, the, what we've done together with the Brazilian authorities uh, is uh, identified areas of priorities where we can have win-win uh, 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 collaboration and uh, we have been uh, supporting, co-supporting from the Brazilian side and from the EU side, common projects uh, systematically since now seven years. We have just uh, finished the fourth joint goal that we do, uh, finish the evaluation, so we launched projects from the fourth joint goal. And uh, we are preparing the fifth one. Uh, the total investment that we've done so far is around 50 million euros. So it's not, a small amount between in these collaborative projects with Brazil. And this is part of uh, 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 the uh, collaboration that we have, uh, science and technology agreement that we have with Brazil, but also part of our uh, EU-Brazil uh, dialogue on uh, information society, so on the policies regarding digital technologies and their applications. And we have these agreements since then. 10 years, we're celebrating the 10th year of EU uh, Brazil ST agreement and the same for the information society battle. Very, in uh, very intensive, and uh, we, we are evaluating systematically what's coming out of these collaboration. So, how the participants, how our businesses, how our sci scientific uh, uh, academic communities uh, see this collaboration, and it's sis systematically positive. Uh, and we hope that this will continue. So uh, we're ambitious from that 
the point of view, at least from the Commission side, from the EU side, to maintain this collaboration with Brazil. And by the way, we have signed a technology agreement with uh, most, most uh, countries around the world. Uh, the, uh, the objective is, uh, the, through these agreements around Horizon 2020, is of course to mutually reinforce our scientific excellence, to address our common societal challenges from global warming to uh, safety issues, but also to find areas where both uh, uh, we, our partners and us could, have, uh, could reinforce our competitiveness, could uh, use this cooperation to ensure business growth, jobs creation uh, in both regions. Uh, em relação uh, às uh, em relação às TICs, né, às tecnologias uh, às tecnologias uh, de informação e comunicações, né, quais os projetos que o senhor considera prioritários no âmbito da parceria Brasil União Europeia? E quais seriam os principais desafios para que a parceria pudesse se tornar ainda mais fluida? So, uh, the, the areas that we have identified together with our Brazilian partners are uh, spread into uh, areas where uh, there is a, an important societal challenge. I'll take as example cybersecurity, uh, uh, the uh, impact of uh, digital technologies on areas uh, like health, uh, the use of uh, digital technologies in precision farming and agriculture, uh, and areas where we mutually reinforce our technology capacity like uh, the Internet of Things the development of next generation mobile, fifth generation mobile technology, where both of us are looking at how can we develop common standards that enable business growth easier uh, across uh, uh, our regions, but also that we bring very quickly the services to our citizens and to our businesses. So, Internet of Things, uh, fifth generation mobile communication, uh, cybersecurity, uh, the areas related to high performance computing and the use of high performance computing. These are areas where we uh, have identified as priority areas for cooperation. Now, what we see is uh, very interesting is that we started our cooperation, uh, and I think it's the pace of scientific and technological partnerships around the world and collaboration. It's the pace that is developing today. We started with, uh, I'll say, the upstream research, development, innovation, the area where academics are mostly uh, uh, involved. And we've seen with time that industry is coming from both sides. And uh, we see that this development that is done in these projects is helping us also getting a better insight together the, from the Brazilian side, from the EU side, on what to do on the policy uh, issues. Uh, policy issues regarding data policy, policy issues regarding security, policy issues regarding safety, uh, so policy issues regarding our uh, uh, electronic communication regulations. So uh, the, the, this cooperation and research development, as I mentioned, um, uh, it is also helping us cooperate on other areas, be it on the regulatory part, but also on the means to prepare our uh, young generation to be better skilled to face the challenges of digital transformation, but also on um, how to invest in the digital transformation of our public sector uh, areas of uh, health, as I mentioned, but modern, modernization of our administrations as well. Now, this is a dialogue that is uh, covering all main areas of digital policies with research, development, innovation, with the areas that I mentioned as priorities, helping us also uh, interact and uh, cooperate on the other areas. É. 
O Brasil foi pioneiro na adoção de um marco civil da internet, que incorporasse múltiplos atores envolvidos em TICs no Brasil a partir de duas décadas de bem-sucedido modelo doméstico de gestão da internet. Como o senhor enxerga a necessidade de se regulamentar o tráfego de dados ao longo da, da, da web, sem que se é, comprometam os princípios da liberdade e da neutralidade da rede? E como vem sendo discutidas questões como o desafio de se garantir a segurança em face de possível relativização do direito à privacidade? Privacy. Yeah, I mean, it's a very uh, important question, and I'm sure we could spend the whole day discussing data policy and free flow of data. But to summarize the, the position of the EU and what we've done on the EU side uh, regarding uh, the neutrality of the internet, regarding uh, data. Uh, uh, protection of data, protection of privacy, uh, regarding the flow of data. So, to summarize this, on net neutrality, we have it now enshrined in our law. So, internet and neutral uh, infrastructure is, uh, is, is enshrined in our law. Uh, that's, we have no, uh, it's clear for, for, the, for, from, for the EU side. Uh, the internet and neutral infrastructure, that's clear. On data, uh, the EU was the first region to uh, adopt uh, a regulation on the protection of personal data. Uh, so each individual in the EU today, uh, whatever, whenever the, the, uh, uh, the data uh, concerning personal information is uh, used by any uh, online actor, uh, the, uh, that data, uh, the individual, the, per the, any, uh, the, the, the person would have to have her or his consent for the exploitation of use of this data. And if she or he does not want that data to be exploited, they can prevent the uh, operator to use it. So any online uh, operator. So this is we, the... the uh, I mean, if I summarize our regulation regarding data protection. So that's a law. It has been voted by the Member State Council and by the European Parliament and will be applicable from May 2018. We have at the same time adapted everything related to the privacy of communication to make sure that individual, the, the communication of individual on electronic modes are also uh, uh, protected. Uh, so. We have a directive, and now it's a, we propose a, a regulatory instrument to make sure that we, the privacy of the communication is also protected. That's uh, what we have there. And we uh, asked all our partners around the world to make sure that European, the rules that uh, European citizens enjoy it's in the EU are also applied when their data is transferred to any part, other part of the world. That's what we are currently negotiating with our partners around the world. So that's about the personal data. For non-personal data, we're also legislating to make sure that we have uh, a clear framework for the free flow of this non-personal data across the Union, and we're also looking with our trading partners how this could be achieved around the world. Uh, the, uh, this is what uh, we, we have done on data, and we have also a legislation on uh, the availability for exploitations or for use uh, for new business development of the public sector information. Uh, this is a very open data, uh, very open data policy. So any information that is accessible and that is uh, owned by the public sector and that is accessible to the outside is an information that can be used, or the data can be used by businesses to develop new businesses, so we call it an open data policy. So for publicly owned data, we have a, a, a regulatory 
uh, regime that ensures the innovation, the development of new applications, new business growth around that public data, for personal data tightly protected, for non-personal data we have a legislation to ensure that it can flow freely across the Union and we're looking uh, at how uh, it can be uh, done around the world. Knowing that uh, not all these legislations are completed yet in terms of adoption, the adoption for personal data is clear, for the free flow of data it is in negotiation, we hope that this would be adopted in the next year and the uh, public sector information. We have a current <coughs> regulatory framework, but we are updating it so that it, it matches with the new developments of the technology. This is the framework that we have at the EU side, and this is the framework that we are explaining to our partners. We discussed it a lot with the Brazilian uh, colleagues uh, in the last two days. And uh, we, uh, we're also having this uh, discussions with all our trading partners around the world. Uma última questão, é, antes de começar, abrimos o debate, é como o senhor avalia, e eu estou voltando à questão do Horizon 2020, e como o senhor avalia a estratégia adotada por alguns países, em sua maioria europeus, de estabelecer centros de inovação no Brasil? Uh, e de que maneira essa estratégia ajudaria, poderia ajudar a DG Connect a acompanhar uh, projetos no âmbito do programa Horizon? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, of course, we see that very positively, uh, because we, we do believe in this uh, cooperation, uh, as I mentioned before, around research development and innovation. And uh, I must say from the digital side, uh, 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 even if I repeat that, uh, Brazil is a, is a privileged partner for us. Uh, as I mentioned, it is uh, the most uh, intensive collaboration that we have and with the systematic uh, co-investments that we're doing together with our colleagues and the Brazilian authorities to support uh, the uh, uh, collaborative project in this field. So we see investment done by uh, other, uh, by, by EU research labs in Brazil, uh, a very positive move. Just to say that uh, for, for uh, our approach to research, development, innovation, our approach to the technology and its use and uh, to, the, to the benefits that we can have from the technology on the economic side and develop uh, and, our, and our business growth, our jobs, and to the benefits that we have for all our societal challenges. The, the approach of the EU is very uh, inclusive. Uh, it is uh, about the technology for everyone and not the technology for the happy few. It's about bringing the technology to every business in the EU uh, and uh, uh, bringing the benefit of technology to every citizen. Uh, the, uh, our approach is based exactly on uh, supporting the development of competence centers, of research development centers that can, through collaboration with other centers around the Union, become very quickly uh, a world standard. And the development of these competence centers so that, that they can help development uh, at regional level. They bring the technology to any industry in all sectors of the economy bring the technology to uh, any innovator, uh, making it available so to, to, make, uh, to, to help uh, growth development across the Union. And that's the strategy that we're also adopting with our partnerships and uh, 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 in international cooperation. And so the, the development of new competence centers, bringing the technology to all businesses, helping skills development is in, uh, uh, for us uh, totally in line with our approach to uh, digital technologies and its use. Muito obrigado. Uh, temos tempo então para três perguntas. Pediria que se identificassem. Uh, eu então começaria uh, uma faria ainda mais uma, uma pergunta, enfim, aos 
à mesa, né? Uh, no, no sentido, uh, em relação à questão da indústria 4, que eu acho que foi mencionado aqui pelo ministro Aloysio Nunes, e uh, uh, atingir uh, essa, esse estágio avançado uh, de desenvolvimento industrial, uh, para isso, eu creio que tanto a China quanto o país da União Europeia estão se organizando, estabelecendo as suas metas Uh, e com, com vistas a não ficar de fora dessa, uh, enfim, desse estágio altamente avançado, uh, esse estágio industrial, uh, que uh, efetivamente dividirá os países no futuro. Né? Eu perguntaria, então, à, à mesa, uh, enfim, uh, se, uh, em, em, uh, em que medida a colaboração uh, bilateral, a colaboração com o Brasil, é, poderá ajudar mutuamente no alcance dessa meta é, bastante ambiciosa, tanto no caso da China, quanto no caso também do país da União Europeia. So the, if I understand the, the, the question about that, it's about uh, the Industry 4.0? Yes. So, so, yeah, the digital transformation of uh, our uh, industrial tools. Uh, for Europe, we, we announced uh, almost uh, 50 months ago a, a large initiative on the digital transformation of our industry. And uh, we, we uh, looked at the innovation aspect as uh, one of the big pillar of that strategy. Uh, and it has two, uh, two legs, uh, that pillar. One leg is about what I mentioned, bringing the technology to any industry across the Union. And on, for that, we support the development of competence centers, what we call digital innovation hubs. This is uh, competences and the the, all the, the main and latest technologies that industry needs to adapt its products, its processes, its business models. It's industry 4.0 is not only about production processes, Industry 4.0, or the digital transformation of, our, of the industrial fabric today is about innovation and in the products themselves, with more digital inside the products, is uh, innovation and in the processes, be it the business processes, be it the production processes. It's innovation in the business models with services, with a, a sort of blurring of boundaries between the services and the products and new business models that are arising. And we support, we, we, uh, our initiative is about bringing the technologies to every uh, industry, all industrial sectors of the economy, any region across Europe, so that they, that technology can be used uh, and made available for innovation product processes and business models. And for that we put Uh, at the EU level, 500 million euros to reinforce our competence centers, support mainly SMEs and mid-sized companies in their digital transformation. And the member states are engaging now with us, so the member states of the Union, with a total budget of five years, around 5 billion euros, to reinforce these competence centers and our company SMEs. Uh, that's one, one, one leg. The other leg is about big, the investments in Uh, the leadership and the key digital platforms that our industry needs, be it the platforms for manufacturing, be it platforms for automation, be it in robotics, uh, be it in data platforms. And this is an area where we're looking for large-scale testing, experimentation, and standardization of these platforms. And this is what we're doing with partnerships with industry. And there we have a, a total investment of close to 50 billion euros, so close to 10 billion euros together with industry, uh, academia, and the, and the EU budget to support the development of these key platforms that will be in our production systems around the world. And but on both, be it on the hubs concept and how it can be developed, and on the platforms, we're really interested to, uh, we're, we're discussing with our uh, Brazilian uh, uh, colleagues and partners how we can cooperate on this, because I think a common interest in this Uh, uh, on this area. We also have a major pillar on adaptation of our workforce. There is a big, big uh, challenge that we, we are facing 
uh, and I think it's most nations around the world will be facing an adaptation of workforce to the more intelligence, so more artificial intelligence that is coming into our products and production processes. And there we have a big uh, initiative on this. And the third one is about our uh, uh, fit for purpose regulation that I mentioned before, be it on data or be it on safety, security, that we're adapting to make sure that uh, our industry can uh, grow with the digital transformation. So for all these pillars, we think that cooperation is important with our trading partners and with our partners around the world, and with Brazil in particular. Uh, and these are the, the issues that we were discussing uh, and as part of our EU-Brazil dialogue uh, that took place in the last two days. Bashi Tishula. 自己的工业现代化的规划 相互的对接 我们中国有我们中国的优势，比如说近年来在量子卫星啊、航空航天啊、芯片研发等方面取得了一系列的啊这个呃，应该说是具有标志性意义的科研的成果。而巴西呢，在纳米技术、纳米科研、在这个生物
，也为此呢，也采取了一系列的呃进一步的开放的措施，为大家、为个人、为企业来这个在这方面获取更大的空间呢，呃，创造更好的条件。呃，尤其是我们国家近年来啊，在高等教育方面啊，取得了显著的进步。我们每年从大学里毕业的学生就有七百多万人，这七百多万人都要进入这个劳动市场了，所以就业在中国也是个巨大的问题。但是我们并没有把它作为我们社会的负担，而是把它作为我们社会的一个优势，所以我们社会和。我们经济发展的一个呃一笔财富啊，一个重大一个动力。因此，现在的很多大学毕业生，过去都是等，都是靠啊，希望国家给他们、政府给他们安排就业的机会。现在很多年轻人啊，都是在大学三年的时候，大学三年级的时候就已经开始考虑如何自己去去创业了。呃，所以在目前呢，在中国呢，呃，创业。已经成为一种时尚，啊，是一种时尚。我们去年按照联合国这个这个世界产权组织统一的数字，中国这个提交的这个就是专利申请啊，达到了一百啊一百多万啊，那一百三十多万件，在全世界的数量是排在第一的，全世界呢。差不多有三百四十万件，所以这其中呢，很多都是啊，来自于民间，来自于企业，特别是来自于年轻一代的科技人员。呃，enfim, gostaria de fazer uma última propaganda sobre a Funag, os nossos livros. Nós temos nesse livro aqui, nesse livro vermelho, que é um livro sobre relações Brasil e China, né? Quarenta anos de relações. Nós temos um capítulo Brasil e China: novos desafios e dinâmicas de cooperação em ciência e tecnologia. Está à disposição dos senhores para download é, gratuito. E estamos publicando também ainda é, este mês um livro sobre os investimentos da China é, no Brasil. Então vai ser um livro é, não há nada é, igual até o momento no mercado. Mas eu Eu gostaria de finalizar agradecendo então ao embaixador da China Li Xinhan né, e também ao vice-diretor geral do DG Connect, eh, Kalil Urana, né, pela pela brilhante apresentação、eh, e participação nesse nosso seminário e pediria então uma salva de palmas aos nossos panelistas.